Hi there, my name is John Stevens. I'm pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Oregon City, Oregon, and we are part of the ELCA. And welcome to Dollar Store Children's Sermons, where you take a look at the lectionary text and we tie them to an item from the Dollar Tree or the junk drawer or the kids' room or the garage. You know how we've been doing it. Thank you for spending a little bit of your week with me in this way, and thank you for the love that you are sharing with your kids and your congregations and your families. You are rocking it. Yeah. I know. If um if you haven't taken the time to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow the Dollar Store Children's Sermons Facebook page, would you please do so? Uh, it helps with um, projects that I'm looking at doing later in the year and all that analytic stuff and blah, 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 blah. So if you would uh, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, I would appreciate it greatly. All right. So this is for the seventh Sunday of Easter. We're getting close to Pentecost, that's next week, but this is the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 12th, also known in the States as Mother's Day. So, um, I don't do a lot with Mother's Day with that in the text and in the day. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I had, this is my Mother's Day story for church, and one of the reasons why I do um, make reference to it and those who are motherly, I know that there's a lot of... Um, a lot of hurt and pain attached to Mother's Day and Father's Day, but um, all you know, and the and the things like that, um, uh, relationships and all of that. But my first Sunday here at Zion Lutheran, uh, tw uh, twelve years ago, May twelfth will be my twelfth anniversary at Zion Lutheran, and I preached "You Are Loved" because I thought the con at that point the congregation had come through a rocky interim, and it's like wanting to. Um, uh, right off the gate, remind them that they are loved. By the way, you are loved. And I, um, so I preached the sermon, and and then I got a letter underneath my door, and I'm like, oh great, this is a good start. Um, first sermon I've preached, and I've got this letter underneath the door, but it was signed, and that changed everything because you could actually respond to it. And it was, um, it was a woman in the congregation saying that she was disappointed. That I didn't um, that I didn't preach on mothers on Mother's Day. So I had it was signed. So I went and I to talk with her, and then and her comment was, "There are so few times that we can lift up strong women in our midst, and I'm sad that you missed an opportunity to do that." And it it gave me a different lens to look at it to uh, to approach it. And I had asked her if. If she would the next year, if she would preach on Mother's Day, and she agreed. Sadly, over that year, she ended up passing away. And but when I preached the next year on Mother's Day, I lifted up, um, lifted up Marlene Brady. I lifted. Um, so yeah, um, I, I'm. I, my pause there is I'm just making sure I have her name right. But anyway, it's um, yeah it gives me a little bit of, uh, gave me a little bit different insight. All right, that's enough on that story, but that's one of the reasons why I do lift that up. And and even though I don't make it a the main focus, um, there are points that we can lift it up. So um, looking at the gospel lesson, but also looking at Psalm 1, which is the assigned psalm. Um, looking at the gospel, a couple of things. Um, I'm thinking, so here is, we're in that whole section where that kind of the final discourse of Jesus, where Jesus, the final prayer, Jesus is talking to God about the disciples and all of that. So um, my tie-in for Mother's Day, um, and this is and less about Mother's Day and more about my mom, but uh, the tie-in there is that I, I was always, I was amazed the fact that my mom would know that when my brothers, I have two brothers, when the three of us would be having a conversation in another room, and I was so, I was shocked. I mean, I do magic and mind reading as a, on the side hobby, you know, the uh, uh, fake kind of thing, and I was amazed. And I had, didn't do magic at that time. I was amazed that my mom could read our minds and knew what we were talking about, even though we were in another room. Well, that's because. We were stage whispering it, if you will. That's because our conversation that we thought was really hushed and not a lot of talking, we were actually talking a lot louder than we ex 
than we thought. And my mom was just in the other room and she could hear everything we said. Amazing, right? Well, that's like this prayer. This prayer that Jesus is praying to God for the disciples, for the people that are following him, for followers of Jesus. And he's praying it in a stage whisper. Everybody around can hear what Jesus is praying to God and listening in and, and to know that Jesus is praying for you and me, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. When, when a, a tide in that cosmic sense, and now this is, I'm not, wouldn't do this in a children's sermon, but really in that cosmic sense to where um, that throughout, that Jesus is praying for us today and now, and that is an amazing thing. So that stage whisper, um, I'm also thinking about the, um, the uh, cup and string, you know, the old uh, uh, walkie-talkie kind of thing where you've got a paper cup and you poke a hole, poke a string through it. I don't, I thought I had string here. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, here it is. This is my drunk junk drawer right here. But uh, some barbecue twine, I got this at Dollar Tree a long time ago, but um, where you connect the two, uh, connect your two paper cups and you have a homemade walkie-talkie where you can actually be like 15, 20 feet away and have that stretched and you can hear the vibrations as you talk into one and they hear on the other. And the idea that that length of, the length of, uh, they could be in another room. So again, that, uh, that sense of praying for us and not even being here, stage whisper, etc. The third springboard is based on the psalm. And there's the psalm about the tree planted near streams of water and the roots um, being fed and all of that. So the springboard is a fertilizer stick. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at Kroger's at any uh, gardening store. But a fertilizer stick that goes into the soil and feeds, um, feeds the plant. And that how we are rooted in the Word of God, how we are rooted in life, in community, and how we are rooted together and we are fed by this very word that we celebrate and then we lift up as resurrected and as living. So, all right, number of springboards going on here. Um, again, there's lo a lots of directions you can go with. Um, thank you for your partnership in this ministry. Thank you for sharing your love with your kids and your congregations and your families. And let me remind you once again, if you forgot from the beginning, you are rocking it. All right, peace. We will see you next week, which is Pentecost Sunday. Yeah, one of my favorite Sundays.